good evening. Um, thank you all very much for uh, coming by. My name is John Carney. I'm a Sierra Club member. And I want to welcome everyone to this public forum on uh, threats to New York, uh, uh, New York's drinking water. I also want to uh, thank our event co-sponsors. I'll list them right now. That's Common Cause New York, Save the Mountain, Democracy for New York City, Action for Justice, Sierra Club Atlantic Chapter, and Sierra Club uh, New York Group. Um, and now I want to bring to the podium uh, the uh, chair of the Clean Water Watershed Committee. Uh, she serves on the executive committee of the uh, New York City Group, and like all of us, she's a volunteer who has uh, devoted herself admirably, I should say, to protecting our <laughs> natural resources, uh, Carolyn Solis. Everyone on this panel has been working for years to save our water. And they're experts and they're here tonight because they care about our water. And they've spent a good part of their lives trying to save it. Sierra Club is one of the few national grassroots organizations that encourages volunteers like us to help save our environment. We're not scientists, but we can read and sponsor scientific reports. We're not powerful by ourselves. But we have over a million members nationwide. In New York State, we're fighting to save our watersheds from pollution, both from overdevelopment and from gas drilling that uses a process called hydrofracking. We have the best water in the world in New York City. Yet our water is under threat as never before. Private vested interests, such as gas drilling companies and developers, hope to make a fortune from our watersheds. The cost of their pollution could be as much as $27 billion. That's how much it would cost to put in a filtration plant for all of our water. This huge bill will be paid by you and me, not the polluters who will make the profits. There's only one way to save our watersheds from destruction, an educated public who demands that our water be protected. Did you know that less than 1% of the water in this world can be used for drinking purposes? Even though we in New York are blessed with plenty of water, most of the world is running out of it. Getting clean, pure water is not just a problem for third world countries. If we pollute our water supply, there will be nowhere for us to turn. We can see our reservoirs, but we can't see the underground water, called groundwater. Groundwater is important to this whole system. Without it, the trees would die and the crops would not grow. And this is the situation they have in many areas of Africa right now. They've depleted their groundwater, and the water on the surface has also disappeared. 90% of our water comes from the Catskills. It's 1,400 square miles, one of the biggest watersheds in the country. It travels by gravity down to New York City. No pumps are involved. It's one of the only water supplies in the United States that remains unfiltered. Aqueducts that travel underground and take the water into the city are as, as large as 14 feet diameter. You'll hear much more tonight about our, from our panelists about both Bell Air development and hydrofracking. Uh, and right now, without any more talking, I'd like to introduce Julie McQueen, who is the co-chair of the Watershed Committee and president of Save the Mountain Organization, which is working to have the Bel Air Resort proposal uh, reduced or stopped. She serves as the town of Hardenburg's representative to the Ulster County Environmental Council. Please welcome Julie McQueen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Carolyn's going to queue up my PowerPoint. New York City is right now under orders from the United States Environmental Protection Agency to filter that water uh, east of the Hudson because of overdevelopment allowed in the protective watershed lands surrounding the Groton Reservoir. Construction of buildings and roads and tree cutting increase pollution and soil erosion. The soil runs off picks up other pollutants from the impervious surfaces and winds up in the reservoirs. The Bronx filtration plant that Carolyn mentioned is still just a hole in the ground with lawsuits and reports of corruption in the press. But the price tag to taxpayers just to build it already exceeds $3 billion. 
We must protect the buffering watershed lands that protect our water source in the mountains west of the Hudson River. The beautiful Catskill Mountains, America's first wilderness, are a true gem. To have preserved such a park less than three hours from New York City is a constitutional legacy from New York citizens long before us. Its forested mountains also protect the drinking water for fully half of all New York State residents and businesses. This is the site proposed for a huge real estate development called Bel Air Resort at Catskill Park. An ancient hole golf course, driving range, clubhouse, uh, two spas, two hotels, because one's not enough, five restaurants, ten stores, bars, lounges, etc., all contained on site, all on what is currently Forested Mountain. There are also parking garages, uh, guest and service roads. There will be street lighting. This is a very dark place. This is a place where you can still see the night sky and the Milky Way. It is a rare thing on the East Coast. It is extremely rare to be in the middle of East Coast megalopolis and have this treasure, this dark night sky. Well, folks, we will have street lighting on the top of our, of our undeveloped mountains if this goes through. This is a slide of the entire footprint, the whole proposal. It's an aerial photo with the footprint of the proposed real estate development uh, superimposed. You can see that it straddles the ridge at the top and surrounds the little county road 49A, which is shown in blue. The yellow road there, that's Route 28 again. Diesel-powered artificial snowmaking for the public ski center would have to travel all the, way, all the way over to the west to where the footprint of this new resort is to provide the ski-in, ski-out lifts and trails that were promised to the private developer by former Governor Spitzer in a deal that was brokered behind closed doors. We want to persuade Governor Patterson to change this bad deal and spare the taxpayers our water and the rustic, family-friendly, public Bel Air Ski Center. This is what the Wild Acres site looks like right now. That's Route 28 again. You can see the whole thing is forested. There are very few uh, interruptions. Any bare spaces you do see, like up there on the upper right, those are farmer fields. Those are fields. Those aren't parking lots or shopping centers or anything like that. This is a professional artist's illustration of the Wild Acres development on that same aerial photo. He took the developer's own exhibits and overlaid them to scale on the aerial photograph so you could get an idea of how many trees need to be cut and what kinds of buildings we're talking about in one of the developments. It'll be pretty much like a blinking neon sign visible from every place around. This is an aerial photo of the High Mount Development site as it is now. If you know how big the Bel Air Mountain Ski Center is, you understand that we're talking about a very large thing here. Uh, the public is to buy the smaller ski center, which is in shadow, right next to the artist's illustration. The public is to buy the defunct High Mount Ski Center from the private developer, add it to the existing public ski center, by magic, I guess, and build trails and lifts to the private property with taxpayer money. Timeshares and houses go all the way up to the top, above all the ski trails. The rural area and the kinds of roads in the near vicinity would be completely overwhelmed by this project. Many local people reject the idea that this kind of massive real estate development, meant to be sold to an international corporation like Marriott, will provide good jobs with benefits for local people. They know the developers want tax breaks. The local taxpayers will wind up picking up many of the costs of infrastructure, schools, emergency services, etc. They also feel that the project will destroy the peace and quiet of the mountains and suck the economic vitality out of the charming nearby villages who are already there with infrastructure already in place, while destroying the very scenery and the rural atmosphere that visitors come for all year round. Please help us preserve our pure, unfiltered, energy-saving water system from all types of destructive overdevelopment. Thank you.